Good, man. How are you? She just got home from work. Yeah, I see that, man. Gotcha. Gotcha. How's uh, Julian and Chad? Julian and Chad are doing just great. How's Cindy? Cindy's good. Yeah, she's got dinner waiting for me. I'm hungry. I worked up an appetite, and I'm ready to eat. Oh, good. Well, now that you mentioned food, you guys are invited to come over and barbecue. Jenny would love to have you guys. Really? Oh, yeah. oh awesome. And when is this? Uh, next week or something? Yeah, Sunday is good. Sunday? Yeah. All right, man. We'll be here. Okay. All right, champ. Hey, take care. See ya, man. I'm gonna be late. Love you! Hey! Hello, hello! First thing you do! Oh, well, they're coming. We just wanted to get here soon because Chad wanted to see his little girlfriend. Where is she? I'm sorry, sweetie. She's, thank you. She's still sleeping. Mark woke me up at 3 in the morning just to tell me that she was still awake. But he can't take care of her himself. Exactly. I told him, I said, you're already up this week. Like, can't you just get her? You know, and of course, his response, the husband would to say. I have to work in the morning, dear. Would you get up, would you? That's exactly what Brad said the other day. And I told him about all the work I do in the house and how he sits in the office. That shut him up for a minute. Hmm. <sighs> you girls do not make me want to have kids. Hold off one hand. Hey, girls. Hey. hey. Let's dish the dirt. Oh, my goodness, Miss Cindy. Well, I've never seen so many bottles in your chair. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. yeah. going for a convention. Mm -hmm. I probably won't be anywhere near the strip. Mm -hmm. You can just sit here and tell me you're not going to go gambling at all. Girl, I heard they even have slot machines at the airport. Oh, I don't know. I'm not that much of a gambler. I really don't like taking risks. <laughs> yeah, I vouch for that. <laughs> In the five years I've known you, the biggest risk I remember you taking is when you did not come to that full and complete stop at the empty doorway. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was a crazy day. Yeah. What can I say? I like my life the way it is. Why would I want to risk losing anything? Alright, alright. Who's next? Who's next? I don't have anything. Nothing? Okay, I'm gonna go then. <laughs> what? <laughs> Huh, Who has seen the new eye candy at the shop? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yes. oh yes. Yeah. Okay, what am I missing? Because I have not seen it. Uh, uh, I don't even know if you can handle it. <laughs> you can't handle it more than what? I see. Yeah, he's young. Six foot two. Uh-uh. Uh, three. Uh, I am. Yes, he is the most beautiful man I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. He's got the sandy brown hair, the devilish smile. And so hard, he could gray a black uh -huh. arm. <laughs> yep. Well, you know, then it sounds like he's right up your alley. <laughs> You know, I like the youngins. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's about two days ago, and I was driving down the road, and he is walking down the road. Okay, he must just got off work because he had his apron like thrown over his shoulder. It's really cute. So, anyway, I'll just simply pull over and ask if he would like a ride. Of course, you know, because that's the neighborly thing to do. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Turns out he lives alone in some down here apartment down the street. Mm. So, he invited me in for coffee. It was very grown up. Yeah. Tell me, you did not jump him. What kind of woman do you think I am? Well... <laughs> well, fine, I'm out living. Ah, I knew it! <laughs> <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, All lips are still trapped. <laughs>
C4, Dale Mabry Highway. Yeah, I got it. Thanks, man. That's the address of that car wash. It's about 10 minutes from here. Good, let's check it out before we get lunch. Take a little half off this weekend only ass in there and grab your boss for us so we can have a word with us. Yes, sir. Hold on just a second, y'all. I'm Gary Sanders. I'm the manager here. How can I help you, officers, today? Detective Kent, it's Detective Allen. We're going to investigate a murder of a young lady who we believe worked here from time to time. It goes by the name of uh, Kimberly Jennings. Oh, no, not, not Kimber. Oh, Kimber. How well did you know the victim? I, I hired her. You know, she wanted a job where she could work when she wanted to and the schedule allowed. I'd work, but you know, good kid. Always busy with something. About, uh, can you tell us anything about the people she may have uh, associated with, with or, you know, anyone she was seeing or dated? Uh, it wouldn't work. have been appropriate for her to talk about that kind of thing with me. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. <laughs> no, I suppose not, but she never really talked about that kind of thing. At least not with me, anyway. Was well, there anyone here she may have uh, hung out with outside of work or knew her on a personal basis? Well, she got along with everybody, but um, I really only called her friends with two people uh, Derek and Tina. They're both here today if you want to talk to them. Okay, can you arrange that? Yeah, let me go get them for you. Anybody she clashed with? No. Kim was a saint. She was the sweetest girl you ever meet. I mean, everybody loved her. What about a um, boyfriend of any kind she may have had? Dating was always a little complicated with her. How so? She liked a lot of guys. A lot of guys liked her back. You sleeping with any of them? Probably all of them. That's not likely. Most guys were lucky to get with her in the first place. That's not completely true. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? There was a guy named Romeo she stopped seeing about a month ago. He came by here a couple times after that looking for her. What was his attitude towards her? All right, you're barking up the wrong tree with him because he's harmless. Why would you tell him? They said any information would help. I just thought they should know. All right, where can we find Romeo? He works at a bar at uh, 301 Coopers, but I'm telling you, he's not the guy. What about uh, any other jobs she may have had? I mean, to my understanding, she's quite the prolific worker. She babysat for a bunch of people around town. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how she made most of her money. Yeah, she wasn't a big fan of set hours. How many families did she set for? About ten, but only about four or five of them were regular. Uh, you could probably get a list from her parents. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't we hit the station before we start looking for Romeo? Take my car. That's cool. What are we gonna do about lunch? 
Gee, I don't know. How about donuts? Rock. Note it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know me, I might give me money. Uh, yeah. yeah, I need to get the studio thing, man. This new shit, man. What's going on, buddy? What's going on, man? You tell me, we're looking for Romeo Jackson. Oh, y'all looking for him too? Yeah, you see him? Nah, man, y'all let me know if y'all find him, though. You got ID, buddy? Sure don't. What's your name? Mike? Mike? Do me a favor. Give your homeboy a call later and step out of the car. For what? Because we said so, that's for what? Oh, uh, yeah. Take the shades off. Who says you're not Romeo? Me. Oh yeah? Who yeah. are you? I'm Mike. Any reason in particular you're driving a vehicle without a license today, Mike? I wouldn't. Yeah. What's your last name? Thompson. I bet. We'll go run his plates. Uh, whatever, man. How you running, Romeo? Cause I ain't do shit. You know who you are. Nah, man, that ain't. Y'all got me mixed up. Something the officer? You gonna tell us what we need to know? I don't know shit. Now you see, I highly doubt we've got the wrong guy, Romeo. I know you were stalking Kimberly Jennings. Man, we showing up at her man. work. Man. You broke things off. What yeah. do you know about Kimberly? Man, I, I ain't with her no more, man. Well, obviously you know that. Ever since we've been done, I've been trying to get with Tina. I don't know what y'all talking about. Well, guess who pointed us your way? Uh, who's that? Who that? Tina. Oh yeah. Start coughing it up. When did you break up with her? Huh? When's the last time you saw her? Did you murder Kimberly Jennings? Murder? I didn't even know she was dead, huh? Oh, I... Lord, fuck this. Bring his ass in. Get your ass up. What a bullshit. Gonna keep you there till we get what we need out of you. We got all night. In the fucking car you go. Get your ass in. Watch your head, asshole.
I can't believe we're actually doing this. Come on in. Take a look around. Isn't it wonderful? Everyone thinks I'm in Vegas right now. They would never suspect. Never believe that I'm here. In a hotel room. The big guy's in a good mood. I hope so. Did he say we won? You wanted to see us, Captain? Yeah, come in, sit down. You guys made any league well in the Jennings murder case? Well, she's got a list of boyfriends as long as, well, as long. We still gotta check out all the families she's babysat for and work for. But don't worry, Ron, I'm not like herpes on a hooker and TJ. Yeah, no, no, I'm not worried about it. You're doing the best of God. That's why I put you on this case. But understand this. There's gonna be a lot of heat on you and all of us. They get this one in the books fast. <sighs> Seems like every time there's a hot young piece of ass yeah, yeah. and a victim, the pressure mounts tenfold. Yeah. So, let's get it done. You got it, Cap. We're gonna go back out in the field. Um, hey, what about the, um, Romeo suspects? Somebody gave me a tip on earlier. You guys got anything? We ran into him in the street. The guy's a total shitbird, but he's <laughs> clean. Yeah, his alibi checked out. He was working the night of the murder. Good, good. We'll get some leads. Get out of here. Thanks, Cap. Diaz. Hey, pick your partner, Shep. Fellas. Couple leads, nothing solid yet. Where you guys headed? Just got the call in. Apparent suicide. Some lady jumped off a hotel balcony. Really? How about you guys and us? Yeah. We really hate the ones where you gotta get in there and scrape the body up off the ground. Yeah, I know. Don't remind me. Have a good one, man. Hey, right, be good. Come on, fellas. Listen, I don't know what that bitch told you, but I did not steal shit. Oh, God. Hey, 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 Yeah? Mrs. Callahan. 
I'm Detective Richard Kent. This is my partner, Detective Lucas Allen. Do you have a few moments? Uh, yeah. We'll catch up with you later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miss Callahan, did you hire a babysitter from time to time by the name of Kimberly Jennings? Uh, yes, usually twice a month. Maybe more? Why? Mrs. Callahan. Morgan, please. Morgan. We found her body this morning. Oh my god. Did she ever speak about uh, any enemies she may have had or anybody she was in conflict with? No. Not that I can recall. Any information, no matter how small or insignificant you think it might be, could possibly help us solve this case. I'm sorry. I, just, I can't think of anything at the moment. Listen, take your time. Think about it. If anything comes to mind or if you, know, anything, you can remember anything, give us a call. I will. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on? Mr. Callahan. Mark. Mark. I'm Detective Kent. This is my partner, Detective Allen. Nice to meet you. We were just informing your wife of the death of your babysitter, Kimberly Jennings. Yes, she uh, babysat for us on a regular basis. I'm surprised to hear about her death. I assume the police don't inform employers of somebody's death unless they're investigating it. Was this a murder? Yes, it was. Well, do you have any leads? Any idea who might be responsible for this? Well, obviously, we're not going to discuss the details of an ongoing investigation. However, any information you can offer us, we'd be glad to hear it. One of our neighbors, Dale Albright, he's married to a woman named Susan, one of Morgan's friends. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Go on. Well, it was a few weeks ago. Uh, it was the last day after Kim had babysat for us last. We had a barbecue, mm -hmm. and Dale had mentioned a few inappropriate things to me. I told him to back off, but uh, I didn't like the look he had in his eyes. I can't believe this. Why wouldn't you say something sooner? Well, I knew that you would tell Susan, and I didn't uh, want to be the cause of any troubles that they had. Dale is normally a nice guy. Where did you say he lived? Oh, uh, just across the street. The, uh, house with a purple door. Thank you for your time. If we have any more questions, we'll contact you. Okay. Okay. Do you really think that Dale could have done something like that? Who knows? But he's just always so nice. That's what everybody says about every serial killer ever. Hmm. Then it should be Dale Albright? Can I help you, gentlemen? Yeah, hey, can we come and have a few words with you? Sure. It's a nice place you got here, Mr. Albright. Thanks. Detective Kent, this is Detective Allen, and we just had a couple questions for you. Everything okay, Mr. Albright? We didn't uh, catch you at a bad time, did we? No, everything's fine. Just a little low, I think, is all. Maybe you should take care of that. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, man. No problem. Make yourselves at home. Thank you, thank you. See you all remodeling the floors, Mr. Albright. A little bit. Mr. Albright. Yeah. What do you know about Kimberly Jennings? Not familiar with that name. 19, black hair, real pretty. Sometimes she babysits for your neighbors, the Callahans. Oh, Kim. Yes. I know of her. I wouldn't say I know her. I've only spoken to her twice. I couldn't even tell you what about. What do you make of this? Uh, Susan. My wife Susan was reading that. I assume she had bought it. She must have borrowed it from Kim. Hmm. Is your wife here now? Can we talk to her? Actually, no. She's out of town for the weekend. Vegas, some conference or something. But I can get you the numbers of the hotel right. where she's staying. Could you please? Sure. Expecting company? No, sir, not actually. Are you Dale Albright? More cops. What's going on here? What are you two doing here? What are we doing here? What are you guys doing here? I want to leave. Mr. Mm -hmm. Albright, I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, but we found your wife, and I'm sorry to say she's dead. No, she's what? She's whoa, whoa, whoa. She's Susan Albright was your jumper? 
Excuse me, Alan. Alan, let's go. 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 I don't know what to tell you. Maybe she needed a quick getaway from her husband and couldn't afford the ticket. So come on, fellas, give it up. What are you guys doing here? He's a lead in our case. He wasn't a very good one, but he's not looking so bad right now. How so? Well, it's a little convenient to be connected to two murders in less than 24 hours, don't you think? Uh, come on. We've got no connection to Kimberly Jennings, other than some off-color remark that one guy heard. And a magazine? I mean, we can't prove that he knew she wasn't out of town. I mean, he was going to give us a hotel's phone number. Why would he do that if he knew that when we called, she wouldn't be there? I still don't like the prick at all. I agree. Let's just bring him in and let him sweat for a little bit. See what more we could get. Mr. Albright, where were you tonight around 6 p.m.? I already told you. I was just coming home from work. I knew Susan wasn't going to be there. So I stopped and picked up a pizza and a six-pack on the way. There's nothing good on TV. So I ordered a movie from Paperview and had a few drinks. Is there anyone who can corroborate that? Other than the gas station clerk and the pizza guy? No, I was all alone. It's the first time I've gotten any time alone in a while. I was looking forward to it. Wait, you were looking forward to being alone? You must not have been so happy in your marriage if you couldn't wait for your spouse to leave. No, that's not it. I love Susan. I love Susan. It's just that, you know, every guy needs a little freedom once in a while. How nice. With your spouse out of the way, you can have all the free time you want. Man, fuck you. I love my wife. I never want anything to happen to her. Why wasn't she in Vegas? I don't know. I didn't know she wasn't there until you told me. You know what? I've been racking my brain, trying to figure out why someone would lie about going out of town, only to stay at a hotel a few miles away from her home. And the only thing I can come up with is she was seeing someone else. Susan would never. Are you sure about that? Absolutely. I don't buy it. Here's what I think happened. I think you found out that she wasn't going to Vegas. Maybe a friend let it slip, maybe a co-worker tipped you off. Maybe you called the hotel she was supposed to be staying at. And there were no reservations under that name. So you followed her. And you probably saw her with her lover. And in a jealous rage, you gave her that one-way ticket to the pavement. That is ludicrous. Besides, if you're so sure she was having an affair, wouldn't that guy be the best suspect in your theory? He would have been the last one to see her lie, right? What if she wasn't the one who was cheating? Now you're just embarrassing yourself. What if your wife wasn't your first victim of the day? We know you knew Kimberly Jennings, had sexual feelings for her. Were you with her last night? I was with my wife last night. That's unfortunate she can't confirm that. Did your wife leave you? Is that why she didn't go out of town? I want my lawyer. Algae season, and I like to keep everything clean down there. Oh. You be careful. We're a little early. What are you doing here? Man. Hey. Hey. Morning. 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 Hmm. Something smells good. You been up long? Yeah, no, not really. Can you not tell I look at hot mess? Y'all let him cool for a minute. Did y'all hear that commotion last night? What was that all about? Mm -hmm. No. Where's Cindy? Shouldn't we wait for her? I mean, I think she's a little preoccupied at the moment. We should probably start without her. Oh, honey, I think Dex just ready to come in. Oh, thank you. I'll go ahead. Come on, sweet puppy. <gasps> 
Susan was cheating on him, then this is what he would have done. Yeah, we just have to be thankful that they caught that bastard before he hurt someone else. I mean, who right. knows who he could have hurt. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cooperation, ladies. Uh, I know this is a trying time for you both, but any any information you can offer us is, is much appreciated. Who could have done this? Well, it couldn't have been Dale. He's been locked in a holding cell the past 12 hours. See, so in almost every single case where a spouse is murdered, we immediately look at the other. Especially cases involving infidelity. And no offense, but there seems to be a lot of that going around in this neighborhood. So what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, for now. Stay in the house. Do not let anyone you do not know in the house. And report any unusual or suspicious behavior to us immediately. We're gonna start by tracking down her husband. We'll go from there. Don't worry, ladies. We're gonna get this guy. It's ridiculous, man. Who is this guy? And why is he targeting these women? Her husband is Kevin O'Brien. Right. We're running his credit card information right now. Maybe get a lead on where he's been, where he's gonna go. Good. Listen, I want 24 hour surveillance on this house. I also want a patrol car sweeping these streets every 20 minutes. Until something pops up. Got it? You got it? talk to him. Are you crazy? Do you want to get your head chopped off? <laughs> what are you talking about? The police cleared him of Cindy's murder. He was in their custody the whole time. That doesn't mean he didn't kill his wife. They wouldn't have just let him out if they thought that he did it. Maybe his alibi checked out? I'm not taking a chance and neither should you. <laughs> doing out there? Are you actually doing any investigating? Are you getting any leads? I've got three dead women and no killer. Maybe I need to bounce both your asses back in patrol. We have leads? You don't have shit. I've got the media up my ass. I've got everyone from the ACLU to the PTA breathing down my neck and nothing solid to go on. It's not our fault. Yeah. We've got zero forensic evidence. Man, I don't care if you got to knock their door down every rat infested shithole in town. If you got to bust a few heads. Somebody knows something. Now go out there and find me some leads. Get the fuck out of my office and find me a goddamn killer. Jesus. Jesus. 
What's that? Looks like the report on Kevin O'Brien. Get a hold of Con and Diaz. Tell them to meet us at the Sunrise Hotel. The hotel that Susan Albright was murdered. Why? According to his credit card statement, he checked in there yesterday evening about an hour before Susan Albright was murdered. Let's go. Thought you might like an exhibition of your handiwork. I didn't do any of these. So we're supposed to believe that it's just a giant coincidence that you stayed at the same hotel as Susan Albright, who lied to everybody and said she was going out of town? I don't know why she was at that hotel. I mean, I was there because I happened to find out my wife was a lying slut who was sucking or fucking at the city behind my back. I went to that hotel two years ago before I knew my wife was a cheating whore. I had to go out of town on business and my company put me up at the Cleveland franchise. I had an excellent stay, and so when I left Cindy, that was the very first place that popped into my head. You just found out your wife was cheating on you. Not only that, she was bragging to all her friends about her sexual conquest she was having. She made you look like a fool. Didn't that piss you off a little bit? Of course it did. I tell you, I'd find out that shit and I'd kill that bitch too. Oh yeah? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I called my lawyer and started drawing divorce papers this morning. That's the worst thing I could ever do to her. I have this cunt. Hasn't had a job in seven years. And I'll be damned if she was going to see a cent of mine after the divorce. You know, in six months' time, she'd have been sucking dick for a few bucks trying to make rent on her shitty studio apartment. Now, that's a lot she deserved for what she did to me. God damn it. For all the time and money I put in to try to make this work. What about this one? Who is this again? I don't... Kimberly Jennings. She babysat for Mark and Morgan. I never met her. Heard about her through conversation. Word around the block was that most of the guys had a thing for her. You know, some, I don't know, some babysitter fancy. I, mean, I never understood it myself. Well, why were you sneaking around your own house if you had nothing to do with anything that's been going on lately? Obviously, I know what happened to Susan. I was there. And then Cindy turns up dead after we had a big fight. So I knew you guys would come looking for me. You guys always go after the husband in every movie. I don't have an alibi for either murder. And so given the chance, I say you have a pretty good case against me. So I ran. That was a stupid mistake, I know. Come well, on, you hear about her all the time, how some innocent man was put to death. I was scared. I didn't want to end up like that. Captain. Hey. Wait, what do you make of this, huh? This guy's got ice cold water running through his fucking veins. Mm -hmm. I showed him a picture of his wife. He just stared at it. I can't get a good read on him. Well, we've got another 22 hours and so we gotta charge him or let him go. I wanna make the right call when the time comes. Get back in there. Okay, we'll get on it. All right.
like, you know, I, bro, when I was your age, it says, I never get anywhere without responsibility. What's going on in this neighborhood? Not really sure yet, but we did find a suicide note. Sis, I'm sorry for what I've done. I can't live with my guilt. This is typical cookie cutter stuff, fellas. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's this? His plan won't work. You have to stop him. What the hell is he talking about? What do you think, Detective Allen? He's obviously drunk when he did it. Yeah. Maybe he was confused. There has to be someone else involved. I mean, that's the only way we can explain Senor Bride's death. I mean, he couldn't do it if he was doing it alone. It's assuming if they're connected at all. <laughs> you know what? I'm starting to get the feel that they were connected. I mean, three murders just don't magically happen on the same street around the same time. It's no coincidence. There has to be someone else involved. Okay, mm -hmm. we press Kevin O'Brien. Can you make sense for his wife's death? All right, we still got a couple hours to push him. Let's see if we can get out of him before he lawyers up. Oh, baby, I just heard what happened. Is everything okay? So go me in. What's the verdict? Well, according to Detective Allen, there was a note left behind by Dale, taking responsibility for the murders. Except for Simmons, which they think Kevin committed. Apparently they were working together. That's incredible. I mean, you live with next door or somebody for so many years, you just can't imagine they'd be capable of such things. So, uh, can I get you a drink? We've got lasagna in the oven. Lasagna, yummy. I'll get it. We felt we could all use a night together. Like a family. Sounds great. Let's eat. The friend ratted you out. Who? Dale fucking Albright. He told us everything we needed to know in a suicide note. Guess he couldn't handle the guilt. This was probably all your idea to begin with. Suicide note? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. It didn't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed. It seemed more like the kind of guy someone could easily manipulate. Wait a minute, you have things all wrong here. Straighten me out, please. If Dan was responsible for any deaths, I wasn't aware of it. He seemed like a complete normal person to me. I, I can't imagine why he would name me for anything. But if he was deranged enough to kill someone, maybe in his messed up mind, I helped. But I didn't. I swear, I don't know anything! You're a fucking liar. I'm not a fucking liar! You're a fucking liar! I told you I am not lying! Bullshit, fuck you! <sighs> Sensing desperation in his voice, I think he's starting to crack. Dale didn't name him in the letter. We got nothing concrete. Detectives. Officer. It's him. We need a confession. If you did it, I'll get him to talk. It's time to apply pressure.
I forgot. God damn it, are you sure? We drilled this guy for hours. I mean, broken down to the point that he confessed breaking into the girl's locker room as a kid. But he still swears up and down he's got nothing to do with his wife's death. If we push him for hours, there's a chance of confession under duress. But without any real evidence, the DA would never take it to court. Fuck. Cut him loose. Keep an eye. I don't trust the things over with yet. Wow. You look... wow. <laughs> yeah, I uh, thought you'd like this little number. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like. <laughs> Gross! That's not what I'm talking about. I want to take a nice hot bath. You want to join me? Maybe in a minute. Let me get my legs back. <laughs> <laughs>
bed and wake up. Holy shit. What the fuck was that, man? He was coming right at us. Did you have to shoot him in the head? It was off the fence. I don't know, man. Come on, man. Don't fuck me on this. It was off the fence, right? I didn't have any other option, right? All right, man. I got your back. Fucker killed his wife anyway. Deserved to fucking die. Come on, let's just go call it in. Good afternoon, I'm Frank Hernandez. Brock Landis is on assignment. On our top story today, a series of grisly murders have come to an end today after the police shot and killed the man dubbed the housewife slasher. Andrea Williams has the story. Andrea? Thanks, Frank. This morning, peaceful neighborhood has been anything but peaceful. Several well-loved friends and neighbors are dead, brutally murdered at the hands of a previously unknown assailant. In a sense, police say attacked two officers who were investigating a noise complaint early this morning. Friends and neighbors are still in shock over the death of three women, Susan Albright, Cindy O'Brien, and Lacey Rodriguez. Investigators say the women were killed by 38-year-old Thomas Rodriguez. Police say he was not working alone and attribute at least one murder, that of 19-year-old Kimberly Jennings, to another neighbor, Dale Albright. Now, Jennings was a longtime babysitter for many of the families in the area. In another twist, Albright is also dead after an apparent suicide. Authorities tell us he confessed to the crimes in a suicide Note. Now, detectives believe at least three of the murders were the result of the women cheating on their husbands. Now, the killing spree may be over, but that's little comfort for those who lost loved ones in this tragedy. Kimberly Jennings' mother tells me her heart is completely broken over the death of her daughter, and her life will never be the same. For Channel 21, I'm Andrea Williams. Thank you, Andrea. That's some disturbing stuff. Coming up next, one household item may be trying to kill you. Find out after this. You look very beautiful tonight. Thanks. You don't look so shabby yourself. <laughs> Want a beer? Yeah, thanks. Grab me one while you're in there, too. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. So, um, how's Jillian been handling everything that's happened? Not good. She's been really depressed. I mean, you can't blame her. What we've all been through has been pretty horrible. Yeah. Well, can you believe what they're saying is the cause of this whole thing? About the cheating? <laughs> well, yeah. Everyone knew Cindy and Lacey were sleeping around. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Big whores. As for Susan, well, why else do you think she was at that hotel room? I never saw that coming. I mean, I've been pretty oblivious because work has been kicking my ass as of late, but you don't think that Morgan and Jillian are sleeping around, do you? No, oh, no, no, no. Our girls are good girls. And besides, they know what can happen now if they step out. All right? Dinner was delicious. Thank you. We're glad to have you. So, what are you guys doing on Saturday? Uh, Saturday, we're just gonna hang around the house. Uh, Mark's mom is gonna stop by on the way to see his sister, and she has to spend some time with Beth and kind of just hang out with us, chatting with us. Oh, that's too bad. I thought we could all take the boat out for the afternoon. Um, you know, just the six of us? Oh my god, that does sound like so much fun. We all could use it, but... I tell you what, why don't you let us take Chad off your hands, and then that way you guys can kind of just do a little romantic trip. That actually sounds really nice. Thank you so much! <laughs> I'm so glad it'll be just the two of us. Girl, it is no problem. We love the little guy. I thought we drop anchor here. Is that all right? 
I think this spot looks perfect. So, how are you handling everything? I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard. I can imagine. It's just, not only did I lose three of my best friends, but have them taken in such a brutal fashion from someone we know, or at least thought we knew. Yeah, I know. It doesn't seem fair. But I can kind of see where he came from. Excuse me? Oh, no, no, wait, though. You know what the news said. These women were cheating on their husbands. Some people would argue they had it coming. I can't believe I'm hearing this from you. What? You're surprised that I am against a spouse cheating on her husband? Millions of women cheat on their husbands every day. You don't just go around killing them all. Maybe they finally got what they deserve. I can't believe you just said that. These were my friends. They were cheating whores. The whole block knew about it. They know the meaning of the word discretion. Don't you dare talk about my friends that way. Why are you defending them? How can you condone what they did? Oh my god. You were part of their group, weren't you? It's not how it sounds. <laughs> it makes so much sense now. Is that what you girls would talk about in your morning get-togethers? Who was blowing who? Which whore was fucking around on their husband? We only went looking for what we weren't getting at home. Don't fucking do that again! You son of a bitch! Don't you ever! You stupid fucking cunt! I know I should have started with you! They could have taken the fall for your murder as well! You always had a thing for you! You was a fucking perv! You had a thing for all the women on the block! You're a fucking prick! You go around sleeping with half of the neighborhood, then you go on some self-righteous killing spree, killing half of those women? You're a fucking hypocrite! Unfortunately for you, that's the least of my character flaws. Closed. Something just doesn't sit right with me, man. What's that? Well, the officers who shot and killed Tom Rodriguez were responding to a noise complaint that was called in at 4.30 that morning. Right? Well, who made the call? What do you mean? Well, the house next to them belonged to Cindy and Kevin O'Brien, and behind them were Susan and Dale Aubrey. So both homes were empty. Right. So who heard the noise? Who made the call? Let's find out. Car is hot. He's in here. Go cover the back. Make sure he doesn't try to run. Shit. Detective. Correct, Mr. Travis. Pardon me posing on you, but I just had a couple questions if you have a few moments. Sure. Come on in. Thanks. So, where's Mrs. Travis, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, not at all. Um, she's out with a few friends. Uh, she should be back any minute now. Uh, how are things between you two lately? Look, it's not that I don't enjoy a good social visit now and then, but uh, why do you stop by? Well, a few days ago, the morning they found your neighbors, Tom and Lacey Rodriguez, there was a noise complaint called in. About 5.30 in the morning. The only problem is, both of the houses next to them are empty. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Um, yeah, we, we made a call. I made a call. I, you know, I didn't want to say anything before because I, you know, I thought it was just a domestic violence thing. I didn't want him to come after me. So you did hear him fighting? About, uh, what time, what time did that start? It was about... 
5 a.m. It's about the time I get up for work. And when it didn't stop, I called like you said at 5.30. Wait a minute. It's kind of funny because, uh, the call came in at 4.30. What, well, what did I say? Didn't I say 4? No, you said you started hearing noises at 5. Oh, sorry, I, I meant 4. <laughs> yeah, um, I haven't been getting much sleep with everything that's been going on. Well, that's understandable. I know your family's been through a lot the past week. A lot of things going on. So, everybody makes mistakes. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I just want to get that cleared up. I'll, I'll be on my way. Take care. Walk you out. Actually, she was so excited she decided to lay down and take a nap, so uh, I'm here. Uh, well, you just missed Mark, but I surely want to call me. I would have told her that Chad's sleeping so peacefully right now that you guys should just let him stay the night and come get him in the morning. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, but we don't want to close in such a way, so I'll just take him off your hands. Don't be silly. It's no problem at all. We'll make breakfast. Look, I'm kind of in a rush here, so can you just get Chad for me and I'll be on my way? Chad, I don't know. I'll call Julian and I'll have Mark call you when he gets home, okay? Fine, Morgan. Yeah. 